it's Guns, and today I'm going to be giving you a tour of Gunfire Reborn. Gunfire Reborn is an indie FPS roguelike with RPG elements. It's fucking crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, hold, hold on, hold on. Developed by Dewey Games. This is their second game as a studio, and it initially launched as an early access title in May of 2020. And I gotta say, this is one of few early access games that has not left me feeling like a total simp. It felt great in early access, and it has only improved from there. Even better, the day I decided to start working on this video, it's been revealed to me that there's even two planned DLCs and multiple free updates in the pipeline. They haven't failed me yet, so I think the game's only going to get better. You gotta check this out. When you start the game, you'll find yourself with a limited number of things, but in standard roguelike fashion, the more you play, the more persistent unlocks you get. Characters, guns, occult scrolls, all of this is within reach as long as you just play the game. This game has six playable characters, all with their own passive upgrades, talents, and unique skills. We got a fast bunny, a dual wielding puppy, and a magic cat just to name a few. The early game, I suppose you could say, revolves around upgrading this kind of huge skill tree so that you can more easily progress through the game's multitude of stages and hazards. And once you've upgraded enough and cleared the first difficulty, there's even more to do! Once you've crushed normal mode, you unlock the privilege of playing the game, but harder, on elite mode and nightmare mode. There's even a fourth difficulty called reincarnation, which is a bit more involved, so I'll get to that later. Let's talk about the gameplay. Shoot and loot and loot and shoot. Y you kinda get it. Gameplay speaks for itself. You shoot fools, they shoot back. You got this little dash thing with some iframes. Sometimes you find a crack in the wall. That's a secret vault. They got bosses in there. Platforming challenges, which uh, I hardly got any footage of somehow in like two hours of runs. Some battle gauntlets with extra hazards. And you've got seven boss fights spread out between each of the four stages. It's pretty much what you'd expect, but the real bulk of this game comes from the loot and non-persistent upgrades, so let's just get to the good part. The game has 48 weapons as of recording, and all of them are pretty dang cool, man. Weapons are broken down into eight categories. Melee, injectors, which is just like a way of saying beam weapons, launchers, snipers, shotguns, you, you get the idea. I know it sounds pretty standard, but don't let that fool you. The weapons are more varied than they sound. Within these categories, we can find weapons such as a chain gun, an SMG that behaves exactly like a TDR weapon, kunai that ricochet and explode, throwing spears, protective talismans, multiple crossbows, you know, normal bows, something like the flacker from Borderlands, and a fire-breathing handheld dragon. And to push the uniquity of each weapon to the extreme, some of these weapons include alt fires and guaranteed passives, plus each and every weapon has its own rare drop unique inscription. Except for Porcupine, the poison shotgun according to the wiki, I, I don't remember one, but I'm not sure about that either. Not every single one of these are exciting, but you will find things like extra explosions, majorly reduced ammo consumption, and a death mark like debuff. Wait, what's an inscription? Hold on, right, 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 right. This is a fancy way 
of saying that the weapons have some randomized stats. This can be as simple as higher crit multiplier, better accuracy, but as you progress through stages you'll notice that the number of inscriptions on drop weapon increases and their effects can get a little more interesting. Stuff like non-elemental weapons becoming elemental, bonus damage while scoped, stacking damage from crits, it gets extreme and you will definitely be finding some ridiculous combinations that you could not even dream of. And last but not least are the Gemini inscriptions, which can be re-rolled and have something like a set effect. This one here makes it so that my other rifle inherits elemental damage from the other, and a cool one that I never bother using is a spore inscription that causes your weapon shots to plant spores, and if you swap weapons then hit the enemy again with that different weapon you will detonate the accumulating spores. This is just the tip of the iceberg though. Talent Chalices I cannot tell you how many talents each of these characters has, and since they just keep updating the game, there's no telling how many I don't know about right now. But these chalices are the penultimate upgrade, you could say. The number one thing you want to drop from a mini boss is a chalice. It is your most meaningful way of powering up. How these things work is that you have tiered upgrades and untiered one-off upgrades. The tiered upgrades increase in power slightly if you go from level 1 to level 2, but being able to max out at level 3 of a talent is where it gets good. This can be difficult to do because you only get 3 talent options out of every chalice, and on a really bad run you're only getting 1 chalice per stage. But, if you get a level 3 talent, Buffs will go from having 6 second durations all the way up to 20 seconds, and you get some insane multipliers. And depending on the character, you might even get a third effect tacked on to these already great stat boosts. Yeah, this is starting to look like a lot to factor in. Scrolls. Scrolls, scrolls, scrolls. Occult scrolls. Whatever that means exactly. Scrolls are where most of your power is going to come from. You're going to find a lot of these to work with, and they work similarly to the chalices. Typically, you'll find a green chest and have to make a choice between the three scrolls within, but sometimes mini bosses and room events can drop these for you. Scrolls are very varied and range from quality of life stuff like double grenade capacity, all the way to things that you're always going to want like guaranteed crits for 3 seconds after getting hurt. The scrolls keep the game interesting more so than anything, and they're the glue between your weapon drops and your character, plus your preferred playstyle. You gotta play your scroll choices right, or you're gonna die like a bitch, and no one wants to see a dead cat, or, or dog, or other cat. Uh, and now, we finally can move on to reincarnation mode. This is the big boy game mode. It's essentially a harder nightmare mode with multiple tiers of difficulty. Think mayhem levels from Borderlands 3, but not shitty. This game mode allows you to buy reincarnation perks, which can be unique to your character, but they also have plenty of generic options. You can only have three, and you can refresh the shop to your heart's content, but these cost soul essences, the game's singular meta currency, used to upgrade the persistent skill tree at the beginning of your addiction. You can buy these at the transitional stages between each boss, but you aren't going to see a lot of these, and I think reincarnation is intense enough to justify fishing for that perfect combo. This game mode, I'd say, is strictly reserved for the most hardcore of us gunfire enjoyers. I don't even play it or progress it too much. I prefer elite mode, it's got a good difficulty curve, and it's fun and challenging without the game being hella bullet spongy. Overall, I think if you're looking to get your hands on a new looter shooter, or just a shooter, then gunfire is definitely the best bang ah! for your buck you could possibly ask for. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is on sale right now, but just skip that. We don't even want to talk about that. If you want to play a game that's only worried about being a good game, and a game that's not stuffed to the brim with shitty live service player retention tactics, pick this up. This is your game. I bought this early access, it was good then, it's great now. 
this game healed my mourning heart after the unfun cringe fest that was Borderlands 3. There's no ridiculous farm, no horrid mandatory story beats, no resetting playthroughs, just raw, visceral fun. My absolute favorite thing about this game is how a build comes together. You never know what's gonna drop when you factor in all these different types of character progression. No two runs are gonna be the same. Yeah, that's cliche, it's randomized, whatever. You don't get it. There's so much randomness in this game, it's the true source of the fun. Plus, this game's got an Xbox Series X release coming in October. Thanks for watching, and have a beautiful day. Yeah. <laughs>